Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. This video was supposed to go up yesterday. Life, life. Anywho, I'm starting with Honeybee's Beehive Card Wafer Dyes. These came out quite some time ago. And yesterday was like World Honeybee Day, something like that. So like everyone was celebrating <laughs> and I'm late, me. Anywho, this wafer dye is huge. So I'm using my big Gemini plates here that are like nine by 12 because the beehive card itself, the wafer dye is like nine inches by five and a half or something like that. So it cuts out the base and then there's another dye that cuts out a layer. And then there's two options for, you can cut little doors in it, which is the cutest thing ever. So I use the more kind of oval shaped one to cut some doors in the second layer. So when I'm doing doubles of everything, just, you know, when I can, I like to make, you know, more than one card at a time, because why not? The supplies are all out. So I did that, I did my die cutting. And then I have the coordinating, this is the Beehive stencil set, and it's meant to coordinate with these dies, but you can also use it just as is, and you can, you know, stencil onto just a piece of cardstock, you know, blend all the colors, do the layers, and create a beehive shape, which is really fun. So you get the two pieces of stencil like this, and then there's an open one, and then there's actually the mask piece as well, so it kind of just gives you options. So I use these two stencils and I am just blending on some Distress inks with a Picket, Picket Fence blender brush. And I started with my lightest color, which was Mustard Seed, and it gave it that bit of definition. And then I went in with Wild Honey in the second stencil. So you can just see how it just really starts to add to it and gives it that depth. And then as a final step, I'm taking Vintage Photo Distress Ink and just kind of blending that in from the edges. And you can just see again, how it just gives it that extra, you know, you take it from plain yellow cardstock and then you get all this depth and color. And I was really like, you know, thinking like deep, dark honey. <laughs> so did all my blending on the front pieces and then you could just leave the base as is, or you could use a different color for the base. But I decided to take that vintage photo and really blend it onto my little honeybee hive um, card base as well, just to give it that depth and that bit of more darkness and whatnot. So with this, I'm not as concerned about the blend other than the little kind of center bottom area where the little doors are gonna kind of open. So you're gonna see it, but the rest I'm not so concerned about having like a perfect blend because it's gonna get covered up other than the very edge. So I did all that blending, got all that depth. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my micro fiber cloth. I didn't clean it before because I was working basically lightest to darkest, so I didn't bother. But now I'm just rubbing my brush on the microfiber cloth to remove all that ink so then I can just use it next time for something else. So I did all my blending and then of course I'm gonna add some splatter. So I started with Vintage Photo Distress Oxide Spray and all the pigment settles to the bottom of these. You need to just shake them side to side to really mix up that pigment. And then I just pull the nozzle right out of the bottle and then I just like shake it right over my project. So that creates my splatter. So vintage photo, especially like it, oxi it, it oxidizes like on its own without adding water or anything. It's neat. It, I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's like when you see it in action, it's like, it's very interesting how that one really works. So I did that for the brown and I added some white splatter with some just picket fence distress paint. Um, the distress paints are very liquidy, so you don't really need to water them down. However, just FYI, they do take longer than you would think to dry. I did end up smearing some of this because I'm impatient. So splattered on some distress paint in the white, the picket fence, and then I used black soot distress paint and did the exact same thing. And FYI, if you're not aware, distress paint is permanent. So wash your brush, wash your tools, whatever you're using it with, because once it's dry, it is literally permanent. So I just like clean off my acrylic block, wash my brush and it's good to go. But did some black splatter just to give it, you know, again, more of that depth, dimension, etc. And then I'm gonna set both of these aside to dry and work on my main images, which are the Busy Bees stamp set. This also came out quite some time ago. I did videos using the flowers, goodness, a year or two ago. It, it's been a while. <laughs> so this time I pulled out every single um, image from the set, lined it up in my travel stamp platform, and I'm going to stamp all of these onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock with Simon Says Stamps Intense Black Ink. So I'm gonna ink up all of these stamps with that ink and then stamp them a couple of times to get a crisp black image with all these little bees and there's flowers, there's hearts, there's little leaves. So stamp them all, 
couple times and then this was just a full sheet of cardstock so i just turned it around and stamped everything a second time since i'm doing doubles of everything so got it all stamped turned the cardstock around to the other side and then inked everything up and stamped it a couple times as well and because I use the Nina cardstock and in the intense black ink from Simon Says Stamp, everything is Copic friendly. So I can do all my Copic coloring with um, all of these images. So after I get everything stamped, I'm going to do all my Copic coloring. The coloring I kept really, really simple, really, really easy. So I sped that up as usual because otherwise we'd just be sitting here all day with this video and I wouldn't have a whole lot to say. So got everything stamped and then with my Copics, I started with the uh, Daisy images and I used some cool grays. Just that kind of gives them a little bit of depth and dimension and makes them look more white. So really simple. I started with um, cool gray. So C2 as always just doing my darkest to lightest because it's faster. Just kind of pulling the color from like the center of all the flowers. And then I'm gonna go to C1 and then I'll do C00. And then I think off camera I ended up doing, I took my colorless blender just to lighten it all a little bit and to blend that. So after I did um, all of the cool grays for the flowers, I'm gonna work on the flower centers. And the flower centers I took, um, I went kind of with like a, that was inspired by like the vintage photo and like the dark honey color that was going on with the beehives and whatnot. So I was like, okay, E99 as my first color, then YR27, YR24, adding that in and then again, darkest, lightest, and then it's all blended and good to go. So did that with the flower centers. The leaves was G05, YG07, and YG06. So blended all of that in. Once I got the leaves done, I can go on to the little bees. And the bees, I started with yellow first, just to get that into place. And because that was the bulk of the coloring for these because I wanted their little faces and everything to be yellow to really you know make that stand out so I started with Y19 and then I'm going to go in with Y18 and Y13 and again they're small images yeah. you can sometimes like if I'm not doing as many images I'll sometimes put in more effort you can really you know take in more markers add more depth and dimension you know add the darker areas etc but more often than not it's like it, you're not going to notice when everything's said and done you know, you don't need to be a coloring master. Um, I always appreciate when I see other people do it. I just, sometimes I can just sit back and it's just like, wow. Like, you know, like they're just, their images just pop and like the depth and dimension they create. And it's just like almost mind blowing in a way. And I appreciate that when I see it because it's like, I know the time and effort that went into it. And some people really love that, you know, love putting in that time to just sit and color. I enjoy coloring. I really love it. But more often than not, I'm doing things like this where I'm doing tons all at once and I just, I don't have that time and I just don't want to. So keep it simple, but also to show that you don't need to be, you know, expert level always. It's nice to work up and get more practice and improve, but you don't have to be this, you know, fabulous colorer to be considered, you know, a great handmade card. It's the time and effort you put in regardless. So another random pep talk anyway. <laughs> after I was done all my coloring die cut everything with the coordinating dies and then for the sentiments this is the high honey stamp set this came out more recently and I decided to stamp it directly onto the beehive like there's coordinating dies as well for this set and I thought about like die cutting maybe doing some heat embossing etc but I don't want to cover up much of the beehive because like I'm going to put the flowers on the bees on everything so they're going to cover up a lot and I didn't want to add a bunch of like bulky sentiments to also cover these beehives. So I decided to stamp them directly onto the hive. And for this, I'm using um, the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. Um, this stamps really well over things like the splatter, etc. So I used my stamp positioner for this because everything got stamped twice to really make sure it was intense. Covered that splatter, etc. And stamped it on both of the card fronts here and then while I have all of this and the stamp set out I'm also going to stamp the insides of these beehive shaped cards so I'm using more sentiments from that same high honey stamp set so I'm going to kind of line up the inside of these cards here 
line up the sentiments and then same thing stamp them a couple times onto the inside of the card with that versafine um claire nocturne ink people have been asking me if it's like how different it is from just versafine onyx black like the original honestly they're very similar very similar i don't know if the formula is at all different the ink pad itself is slightly different like and the outside of the ink pad is different that's why i like this one better it doesn't have that flip lid that gets ink everywhere mm. love it so i love this ink pad this the shape of it and just the type of it better um but i honestly don't know if the formula is any different it looks and stamps pretty much exactly the same as far as i can tell so if you have the old one you don't need to get this nocturne but i do prefer like the shape of this nocturne and the fact that the ink pad is not hinged to the base so that's that's my thoughts on that so after everything was stamped i popped the front on with some foam tape and then i'm adhering all the little bees and flowers and whatnot with a combination of foam tape as well as craft tacky glue so I adhered a couple of the bees and heart on the like inside the doors and then popped everything else up kind of on the outside and then saved a few of the bees for the inside of the card just to kind of tie it all together could could leave it at this but i wanted to add a little bit of bling since i didn't use my white gel pen i know shocking but i wanted to use some crystal glaze and that will dissolve white gel pen and since i was going to use crystal glaze i was like oh i should pull out my glitter duster i've had so many people asking about this i don't think i've shown it in a video so i have the stampers anonymous glitter duster and I have some glitter. This is Unicorn Dust Glitter from Simon Says Stamp. So just a really pretty iridescent glitter. So I'm just putting some of this into the glitter duster. You can like pretty much pour the whole container in if you wanted to, but I just use my little tonic spoon, put some glitter in. And then this glitter duster literally kind of, blow, you'll be able to see it here on camera in a second. It kind of blows glitter in the, like this really fine cloud. So you're not dumping tons on. It just gives you the finest amount. It's it's interesting how this works and I really like it. So what I did was I took some crystal glaze. You could use glossy accents. You could use glue. Any like liquid glue would work as well. I just chose the crystal glaze because I like how it's very, very thin and liquidy. So I can work quickly with it. So I filled in the flower centers and then I added scribbles. Like I added it everywhere. I added it to the bees wings. I added little scribbles to the petals. I filled in the hearts, etc. Just added a bunch of that so now this is like wet this is basically wet glue and then i'm going to put this into my splat box just to kind of contain the cloud of glitter and then all you do is lift up the nozzle and you press the little pump on this and it just the finest dusting of glitter it's fun <laughs> it's really fun so i did that tapped off the excess and then this all has glitter and i'll show kind of closer up at the very end how it looks like after it's dry so did that and then remembered I had to do these little characters kind of inside the door as well. So just kind of carefully held open the doors, added the crystal glaze again, and then dusted that over it. And then I'm going to repeat this process with the second card. So really, really easy. And then everything's like shiny and has that bit of glitter and it just gives it that extra bit of dimension. So, and I just tap out the excess over my trash can with this glitter. It doesn't really, there isn't much compared to like dumping full on glitter. So once I was done, that finished it off. So now you can kind of see that glitter over the um, crystal glaze, but it doesn't, you know, normally if you would just pour glitter from the container over crystal glaze and things like that, you just end up with like blobs of glitter, if that makes sense, if you've ever done that before. So I really like the glitter duster. It just, it's like the perfect amount. I'm at, now that I've finally shown it in a video, I'll probably use it more often. So I all there, I still have glitter kind of all over my card bases, but I brushed that off after everything was fully dry. I just brushed that off with a wide, um, fluffy brush. And then the glitter is only contained to the areas where I placed the crystal glaze. So that was my cards for today. As always, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list. I'll link to everything I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you guys so much for watching, for thumbs upping, for subscribing, for commenting, for sharing. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.